Since we just entered the fall movie season, I wanted to give you guys my top 10 most anticipated movies for this fall and winter right now. In 10th place is going to be Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and this is actually an interesting one because I didn't expect it to be on this list because the first trailer I liked. I, I liked the first trailer, but I, I really don't have a lot of nostalgia for the first Beetlejuice, even though I really do like it as a film. But when the second trailer came out for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I was like, this looks really fun, and it just looks exactly like the first one. Like the first teaser trailer kind of annoyed me with, you know, just the way the callback for the song and all that, how it was really slow. The second trailer, though, was was just really fast paced a lot of fun stuff a lot of pr fun practical elements especially when beetlejuice opens up his stomach and all like the i think it was the fish fly out of him i love that i love practical elements so much in movies and tim burton looks like he's you know fully coming back as you know his prior self because him the last like five to ten years he hasn't really been making that many amazing movies i know he just had the you know recent major hit of wednesday but that's you know very different uh, that's like a tv show and all that and that yeah really wasn't like my favorite thing i know a lot of people obsessed over it it's one of netflix's biggest shows but i didn't really feel like there was a lot to love there this new beetlejuice movie though i feel like michael keaton really hasn't lost a step as beetlejuice in this one and he even confirmed in an interview he only can he only wanted to come back if his beetlejuice the character was going to have basically the same amount of screen time as he did in the first movie which was about 17 minutes and I, I love that I love that they're doing that don't overexpose Beetlejuice the fun fact about the first one the fun thing about it was Beetlejuice was kind of just lurking in the background a lot he wasn't really in a lot of the scenes and I love that they cast Jenna Ortega as Winona Ryder's daughter in this one as uh, Astrid Dietz um, I really do love Jenna Ortega I, I think that she's getting better and better with each role she's she's getting to a point I think where she might become overexposed but that's only if she's really in bad movies. I think she's in a lot of great projects so far. Really excited to see Willem Dafoe in this one. I love the way he looks. He has like a, a really interesting uh, makeup going on with him. Like half of his head is exposed. So you see his like brain and all that. And you can tell. You can tell that's like all like kind of fakeish stuff. But that's the, that's the, you know, the beauty of it. That's the beauty of Beetlejuice. A lot of practical elements that just look kind of fake but that's the point that's what you want here and at least there's no like problematic people in this one like in the first people juice you had alec baldwin in that one he's gonna turn problematic here but i'm happy to see you know three generations here with one known a writer jenna ortega and even more people i just feel like this one's gonna be a fun ride and i think a lot of people are gonna go see this one the box office projections look really high and i just think that it's gonna be an easily rewatchable movie in ninth place i have y2k which another was another film that I wasn't anticipating to put on this list. This is from A24, directed by Kyle Mooney. You can probably guess what by the title what this is about. You know, the, you know, the turn from 1999 to 2000, where everyone thought, you know, that big disaster is going to strike a lot of big crazy things were going to happen. And if you've seen the trailer for this one, crazy things happen. This is kind of like a disaster movie mixed with a comedy. You know, it hits 2000 and then like st robots start attacking people. It's a really weird trailer. It has a weird tonal shift that I wasn't expecting, but I ended up really loving that first trailer. And you kind of got a really great young cast here with Rachel Zegg who I think is getting great with every one of her roles except Shazam 2 I you know we don't love Shazam 2 here but West Side Story she was great Snow White she looks to be great in but the movie overall doesn't look that good uh Jaden Martell I'm happy he's getting some more bigger roles after he was pretty great in If and Julian Dennison who you might not know but he was in uh he was in Deadpool 2 and he was great in Deadpool 2 and actually the kid Leroy has a small part in this movie probably a pretty small part but I really do love the kid Leroy's music I'm not sure how he's going to do as an actor because you know who knows at this point but you know actors you know uh rappers and singers i know kid Leroy isn't a real rapper but rappers or singers turned actors usually turn out pretty interesting i mean jack harlow is pretty good then you have mason goodings also in this from the screen movies you got a great young cast here and it all it just looks like a fun time the trailer had me laughing a couple times but the trailer the trailer also had me saying what the hell is even happening I mean, if this is a bad movie, I'll be fine with that. I just feel like it looks to be a fun ride in the theaters. And it's only an hour and a half. And I'm like, this is going to be an easy watch. And it looks pretty interesting it looks like a very original movie with a really crazy disaster take on it and as i said i love this cast kyle mooney i think that he's an up-and-coming director that i'm interested to see more of and it, it does look like a movie that a24 would pick up because i think this one did premiere at some film festivals that maybe sundance 
But yeah, I think that this one's just going to be kind of chaotic, and that's what I'm here for. In eighth place, I have Heretic, which is about two young missionaries get, that get trapped in a game of cat and mouse when they knock on the door of Diabolical Mr. Reed, and they must turn to their faith to make it make it basically out alive. And this trailer was awesome. I really did love this. It's kind of like a psychological horror movie. It's directed by Scott Beck and Brian Woods, who are mostly known for writing the first Quiet Place movie. And I think they directed 65, was which I wasn't big fan of but who knows this one could be even better I, i'm just i'm just becoming a huge horror fan these days like the more i grow up the more i really appreciate horror as a genre because what can be done with it is so interesting and having hugh grant in here as mr reed kind of like the diabolical villain is gonna be awesome you know hugh grant he, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of like the mean guy in Hollywood, I would say. I mean, I don't know him personally, but I know a lot of people say, you know, he's kind of like one of the mean guys offset. You know, you don't want to kind of talk to him when you, when he's kind of busy and all that. But I, I don't know if I believe that, but he does kind of look like a villain. I'm just going to say that he looks like a guy who would be playing a bad guy. And that's what he's doing in this one. He's playing a bad guy. You know, the two girls, two missionary girls open the door who are played by Sophie Thatcher and Chloe East. I'm not too familiar with Chloe East. I know Sophie Thatcher was in the boogeyman from last year I thought she was great in that movie even though the movie was just okay but they knock on his door and you can just see Hugh Grant and his little and his, and his uh, costume and he looks so he looks so nice he looks like a nice little man then they lock and then he locks her in locks them in he's like you guys gotta make a choice pick one door and this trailer how it's shot is so cool it kind of they're kind of locked in this house and this house turns out to be like a deadly maze like the he turned his basement into like a really big maze and all that kind of remind me a little bit about barbarian i would say two years ago and then it pans up and you're kind of just looking at them going through this maze you know not a lot's given away in the trailer which i really do like this is also from a24 i'm just kind of interested on how they're going to handle it if there's going to be any like twists and turns in there because it can't just be you know just them going through different sections of a maze there has to be like twists and turns i'm expecting mr reed you know to have an interesting you know part to play in this maybe there's a reveal maybe he you know knows them been following them or is related to one of them it will be really interesting and you know it's about like religion and all that and what you believe in i always find those movies pretty interesting and psychological horror movies always are you know fun ones to watch especially with friends and i always love going to friends with horror movies i cannot wait to see hugh grant in this he looks so villainous i think it'll be a fun ride in seventh place i have transformers one and let me tell you this was nowhere near being close to this list if i've only seen the first trailer the first trailer did nothing for me i actually hated that first trailer i thought it was really silly really childish and you're probably like oh yeah it's animated transformers movie it's gonna be childish what are you expecting well you know for children's movies i'm expecting some serious tones in there with some you know some of the adult themes because it doesn't always have to appeal to just children but when that second trailer released i remember when that second trailer released right before i was seeing deadpool i watched that second trailer and i was like okay i'll watch this i don't know if i like it but man that second trailer turned it all around for me i thought that was a fantastic trailer it showed some of the darker darker side turned it showed megatron you know turning evil i wasn't sure if they're going to take that route with this someone but they really did like the and i thought the humor was done really well the action looks fantastic in that trailer they should have just released that trailer from the start and i will say you know they've had some early critic screenings for this and i've only heard praise i've heard you know it's good to you know fantastic to the best transformers movie yet i haven't heard a single bad review for this one i've looked pretty deep online through twitter and they're having you know in my area they're having an early screening a fan screening so like two early screenings and then it's going to be opening wide so hopefully those fan screenings don't hurt this movie but i'm looking forward to it the more footage i see kind of like with beetlejuice beetlejuice the more footage i see the more fun it looks and a lot of people are having backlash about this, having different voice casts, you know, from the other Transformers movies. But I think it will, will work. Chris Hemsworth as Optimus Prime sounds pretty good. Brian Tyree Henry as Megatron is actually a fantastic choice. I love Brian Tyree Henry's voice. Scarlett Johansson, uh, I think that she might be the only one miscast here. I'm not too sure. Keegan-Michael Key as Bumblebee could be pretty cool, but I feel like Keegan-Michael Key can get pretty annoying at times if he just, uh, you know, keeps that same voice that he's going with. And it depends if the joke's great. You know, the jokes in the trailer are decent. The first trailer had a joke that I didn't really care for. The second trailer had some funny jokes in there. It all just comes down to how great the script is. But I've also heard that, you know, there's some moments in here that are as great, you know, that are as great as, you know, the moments in Into the Spider-Verse. But I don't really know. 
but all I've heard is like infinite praise about this one, so I'm getting more and more hyped as we get closer to the release date. In sixth place, I got Gladiator 2, of course, coming from Ridley Scott. I've been anticipating this one for a while. The Gladiator, the first one, is one of the best movies of all time, a true classic, one of Ridley Scott's best movies. And I saw the trailer for this one. I was like, damn, damn, what a trailer. And a lot of backlash has come from that trailer from using uh, Kanye's song, No Church in the Wild. And I will say, I don't understand the backlash. Like the trailer is just a trailer. The mu the movie the music is not going to be in the damn movie. So who cares if it's in the trailer? And it, it kind of fit the trailer in my eyes. You know the lines about you know the lines about God and like no king to a god and all that. The lines about you know kingdom uh, gladiators. I think the lines fit the trailer and fit the themes of a gladiator movie. So don't understand the backlash. Sure, it's a song you know and not in that era. But you know do you have any songs for that era? And then people are saying use the score for the movie. The score for the movie is not even you know done yet. They only start the score for the movie like pretty close to when the movie comes out they usually finish the score in about a month or two I, I don't get the issue with using you know music like that for this trailer it's no different from when other movies use pop star pop songs for their trailers it, it doesn't make any sense i overall think the trailer looks great and them using lucius as the main star is pretty cool uh paul mescal i think is a fantastic actor i'm not really sure how I feel though about him being in an action movie. Denzel Washington though looks to be stealing this movie. Uh, like in the trailer, he though just he Denzel has a, the most aura of all time. I mean, just look at this guy. He's just in the trailer laughing, and you're like, God, this guy's cool. And he's like, uh, in one of the lines, Paul Mescal's like, uh, um, no, Denzel asks him, what do you want? And Paul Mescal's like, uh, the whole army to die and all that, everyone to die. And Denzel's, uh, Denzel's like, too much. And I, I'm like, that's a fantastic line reading. Pedro Pascal also plays one of the villains. Pedro Pascal, I, I think he does a great villain. I think he... I think he could do a right villain. You know, he mostly plays heroes, but I think he could play a great villain. And Joseph Quinn also looks like he's going to be stealing the movie. Joseph Quinn is on a tear recently, man. He is doing great. It's cool to see like the two Fantastic Four actors in this uh, before they're actually going to be in Fantastic Four. Joseph Quinn is playing like a psychotic man in this. And all I've heard from, you know, the CinemaCon footage is that stuff in the cathedral and, you know, the, the coliseums are going to be great. Like, they have an underwater kind of coliseum in this movie. I don't really know what that's about. That sounds awesome, but I will say the budget on this is actually crazy. It's like 250 to 300 million for the budget. So it's probably not going to make its budget of its money back. But what really Scott movies in the past like five to 10 years have made their budget back? I just feel like this is going to be one of the best movies of the year, maybe technically uh, and story wise. I'm always really um, I'm really transcended by, you know, Roman Roman stuff, Roman Empire stuff and this gladiator stuff. And then bringing in Lucius is really cool. And Lucia is coming back. Connie Nielsen. I think that's going to be awesome to see, you know, that love happen. And I'm just, I'm just interested to see what the second trailer is going to be after all the backlash to the first trailer. But I mean, it gave them, it gave them more, you know, hype around the movie, I guess. I mean, bad hype is good hype, you could say. But I think that this one looks great from a costume perspective, a production design perspective, and a, you know, a director perspective. I think Ridley Scott has a hit on his hands. In fifth place, I have Saturday Night, which is, of course, about the first broadcast of Saturday Night Live on October 11th, 1975. And playing Lord Michaels is actually Gabriel LaBelle, who you might know from The Fablemans. And if you've seen it from this year's Snack Jack, I think he's becoming one of the best, you know, young actors working today. I think The Fablemans, he was terrific in that movie Snack Shack. He was really funny. I think he's becoming a nice young star. And just he, you know, the group of young comedians in this kind of story is going to be awesome to see how they're cast in here. And I will say the cast is great. You have Ella Hunt in here who she was in Horizon from earlier this year. I thought that she stood up very well. Finn Wolfhart's in this movie. Nicholas Braun, Andrew Barth Fieldman, Rachel Sinnott, uh, Kaya Gerber's also in this movie. You have an amazing young cast here. Also Cooper Hoffman. This is another one just like Y2K that has a great young cast has great you know up and coming stars that are going to get to prove themselves in many ways many ways here uh jason reitman is the director here he previously directed uh, ghostbusters afterlife which I, I was a big fan of ghostbusters afterlife it made me love ghostbusters and then ghostbusters frozen empire made me not love ghostbusters anymore i wish he would have done that but i'm i'm interested to see him go for like an oscar movie right here we'll see how he does with that but this first trailer 
really sold me and you know it's just it's just kind of like the tension in this trailer looks great and the way it's shot i'm not sure if it's going to be like one of those movies where you know they're going to be like an hour and a half till showtime and that's going to be the runtime and like it's going to be a perfect you know time match on that because i know some movies do that and i don't know if this is going to do that all i know is that this is probably going to be a pretty anxiety filled movie because you know back in the day you know them starting out saturday night live was probably pretty stressful because that was like when the show was at its peak right now in saturday night live it is not that good you know it's only good when ryan gosling hosts in my opinion because that one ryan gosling episode from earlier this year was like the best episode that i've seen probably in like the last five years or so like saturday night live needs need some better cast members let's just say that and the cast members that they did have were fantastic but a lot of them are problematic now in my eyes but i think that this one looks great uh, it looks very fast paced which for a comedy like this it helps a lot to have your comedy feel fast paced as i said gabriel labelle looks great the trailer is really funny has some great costumes great set design i remember seeing the first uh, photos for this one come out and i was like this looks interesting. I wonder if they'll I wonder if they'll nail it. And it looks like they might. And it's coming out in October. A lot of great movies coming out in October. I think that this one is going to be very anxiety inducing, but very funny. In fourth place, I have We Live in a Time, which is a new romance kind of comedy movie with uh Florence Pugh and Andrew Garfield. You heard that right. Florence Pugh and Andrew Garfield are gonna be in a cast together. That is a you know, that is a great pairing right there, a great romantic pairing. And if you've seen the trailer for this one, it will it will just already make Make you emotional just that trailer you know it's about these two people that just have a chance encounter i think if i remember correctly florence Pugh hits andrew uh andrew garfield's character with uh, her car so that's that's a great encounter that's a great first love story right there and then they embark on their life this this movie is basically them you know going from that chance encounter all the way probably to the end of their life but you know stretching throughout you know years and years of their life because their kid is in the trailer uh and then in the trailer you see florence Pugh's character get cancer and all that and, you know, it gets very emotional. They're trying to live their dreams. They're trying to figure out their dreams. It's probably going to be even more emotional while watching the movie. And I already can tell that uh, Florence and Andrew have some great chemistry going on on here. I, I know what I know what they're trying to do here, though. They're going to get you to pull on your heartstrings a lot in this movie. I mean, you know, it looks like uh, Florence B's character is going to die. And I feel like that's just an easy guess. And I feel like they're going to pull they're going to pull a different route here. I think they're going to kill Andrew Garfield's character in the end. Like, I feel like uh, Florence Pugh's character has cancer and I feel like she'll survive that. And then Andrew Garfield's character is just going to die suddenly. I think I think that's going to how it's going to go. I think that's my guess. That's usually how like uh, romance movies do it to make you really sad, and make you cry at the end. I feel like I feel like they're going to succeed here, especially when you have two, you know, very good actors in here. Andrew Garfield, I mean, he doesn't get I mean, I guess he does get a lot of praise, but especially for uh, his last couple of movies that he's done, I feel like he's just, you know, been, you know, killing it, killing it and killing it every single time, uh, especially in Tick, Tick, Boom, which I, I, I actually think he should have won the Oscar for that instead of Will Smith. Florence Pugh also been just at the top of her game, especially, you know, in, in June part two, she had limited screen time, but I thought she was fantastic there. I, I'm ready for this movie to just rip me to shreds and make me emotionally not okay. In third place, I have Nosferatu, two direct by Robert Eggers. If you don't know the story about this one, it's kind of like a remake and it follows a vampire who basically haunts a woman in the 19th century Germany. Surprisingly, there's no like poster out for this one. I was looking for a poster and they don't have one out. But they have an old trailer out. I remember uh, I saw the bike riders like early on an early screening and I really enjoyed it. But I was like, I'm not seeing that again. And then they announced that Nose for R2 trailer is going to be showing exclusively in front of the bike riders. So I bought a ticket for the bike riders just to watch the trailer. After I saw this trailer, I walked out. I, I wasn't really bothered to see the bike riders again, but I have Regal Limited, so it didn't really cost me anything. But man, seeing that first trailer in the theaters. It's different than watching a trailer for the first time at home, I'll tell you that. It, it looks great. This gothic tale that Robert Eggers is showing here, and just the set design, the cinematography, oh, the lighting. Robert Eggers, I don't know who he gets to shoot his movies, but man, oh man, they look beautiful. They look freaky too. Just the visuals look scary. And I will say that Robert, you know, his movies are a little dark. I wouldn't watch them in the daytime. That's like the only thing I'd say. But whoever shoots his movie, I got to give him a big round of applause because the lighting's always terrific. The cinematography uh, and just everything about it. The production design and costume design of Robert Eggers' films are just amazing. I haven't seen all of his movies. I haven't seen The Lighthouse. I'm pretty sure that's the only one I haven't seen, which I guess gets the most praise. I've seen The Witch and 
and the northman i i enjoy the witch i don't really love it as much as other people but i am excited to rewatch it and the northman i thought was great uh it kind of confused me a little bit with how you know fa fantastical it got at times but i really enjoyed you know the style of that one and this one has a great cast you know we got willem dafoe coming back for another eggers movie i know willem loves working with him bill skarsgård is gonna play count orlock i they haven't shown him in the trailer the you see a little shot of him bill skarsgård is great at playing these like monster creatures emma corrin's in this uh ralph innocent who i absolutely love I'm, I'm loving him more and more aaron taylor johnson the the only the one and only craven is going to be in this and Lil, lily rose depp and nicholas holt you know lily rose depp got a lot of you know kind of shame put on her from being in the idol which wasn't a great show and i'm not sure how great of an actress she is because i really haven't seen her in anything uh, i mean she looks great in the trailer though i really do love her performance in the trailer but we'll have to see how great she is in this but just a fantastic fantastic casting right here like this ensemble is terrific robert eggers he really does bring something new to each movie that he does even if it's a borrowed story of some sorts his just visual style and his direction just really has you locked into the movie like even if you don't like his movies i think that you could appreciate the style that he goes for and i just feel like this is gonna be a great movie and it's also releasing on christmas day like why not watch this on Christmas Day? It's a horror movie released on, releasing on Christmas. What's better than that? You know, you always get those, you know, cringy little Christmas movies coming out during that season. Finally, we're getting a horror movie releasing on Christmas. Like, who, who, who doesn't care? Who doesn't love that? I feel like that's going to be fantastic. Robert Eggers is bringing us the sauce. Putting together my top two was difficult, but number two, I have a Nora. This is from Sean Baker, who you might know from as the director of The Florida Project and Red Rocket. I'm just now getting into his films. I just watched The Florida Project, which was a very interesting film. I really did think it was great. I got very emotional. I The ending didn't work for me. Like, I know a lot of people didn't really like the ending. It didn't work for me. It was like, I'm like half in it, half out of that ending. But I love the story that he took with that. I love the way he always shoot his movies. And, and Nora looks great. It's just kind of my about this sex worker who meets like this really famous you know i wouldn't say famous but really rich russian guy and he's the son of like a really you know his dad's really rich and all that she meets him and they set out to you know go on adventures and they try to get married then i guess all hell breaks loose after that you can go watch the trailer i think the trailer looks great uh, mikey madison plays the lead anora in this one and i really do love her i've only seen her in two things so far which was once upon a time in hollywood and scream five uh, once upon a time in hollywood she played uh, uh one of the people going to uh brad pitt's house and tried to fight him and all that i think she was great in that and in scream five she was of course one of the killers and she was so sadistic in that i remember uh, when she got revealed she made an epic turn in like kind of her character and she there's one scene that really just it really just sticks in my brain while thinking about that movie is when she's when she has the knife she's like ee, ee, ee. that that scene is great she really turns on such a villainous mode and i really do think that she is a great actress and deserves a lot more work she seems to be uh, really humble too about it too because i watched i watched one of the interviews with her uh this premiered at can film festival i watched one of the interviews with her she was really humble about everything she was very nervous too so it just looks like she wasn't really anticipating all this praise coming towards her because this movie i think won i won the palm d'or i think that's what the award is called at the uh, Cannes Film Festival, it got, it got a lot of praise at the Cannes Film Festival. I'll say that. Like a lot of pet Best Picture rumors, a lot of Best Actress rumors. I feel like this one could be a big player. I'm not really... And people say like, oh, it has a lot of sex in it. It's not going to get a lot of awards. But Four Things four things debunks that. Look at Four Things from last year. It got a lot of awards. Even last year, everyone was like, Four Things isn't going to do well at the Oscars. Too much sex. Too much, you know, crazy stuff happening. Too much, you know interesting weird sci-fi elements there but they you know it's still one a lot anora though it's been getting a lot of praise from people that i like so i think that i'm also gonna love it and it's from neon i think that studio's been killing it this year uh with cuckoo long legs being a massive success and a lot of other movies this one looks to be great i i just love how sean baker shoots his movies i think he shoots them all on film i'm not too sure about that i gotta watch his other ones i, I feel like those other ones are also gonna be great i've heard red rock it's pretty good but i think this one's set up in a perfect spot in that october release date to get a lot of awards buzz uh, the only thing that worries me is that it's runtime is about two hours and 20 minutes that's a little long for a movie like this but i've, I've also heard that it's filled with some interesting acts I mean, that first act is kind of like romance second act is 
you know, adventure. Third act is kind of like anxiety-inducing mess, which is kind of what I expect because the Florida Project was just the whole movie was anxiety-inducing mess. But I feel like this one is going to be one of my favorites for this year. Uh, i really just loving what Mikey Madison's doing right now. In first place, though, and my most anticipated film of fall and the winter movie season is going to be Joker Folly Ado or just Joker 2. I'm not really sure how I feel about the title. It, it is a pretty interesting title. Uh, you know, I think the most interesting thing about these Joker movies is that it's directed by the one and only Todd Phillips, who, you know, started out with like the Hangover, War Dogs and all that. And he transitioned to Joker, which is an interesting transition right there. In Joker, the first Joker is really well known because it became the first ever R-rated movie to make a billion dollars. It was a big movie when it came out. I think it came out like 2019. So we had to wait like five years for a sequel. And Joaquin Phoenix even said he wasn't going to do a sequel, but he signed on. You know, he signed on to do it now. And, you know, just, you know, Joker kind of, uh, it's kind of changed all the perception of it. A lot of people don't like it now. I've seen that happen with a lot of movies, though. A lot of people are just changing in their minds on what they like and what they don't like it's kind of silly right there personally i didn't think that the first joker was going to work because you know a joker movie without batman who knew how that would work uh, i thought it was going to be like the sony movies without spider-man like the venom movies aren't that great craven's not going to be great but joker you know it kind of shocked me but it's also a very terrifying movie about you know uh, yeah, about some crazy things kind of like it's a rip on king of comedy a lot of people say but it does make its own you know kind of just different techniques that fit its screen uh joker folly ado though you know casting lady gaga as harley quinn is gonna be interesting a new take on harley quinn I wonder if Zazie Beetz going to be in the film because he was in the first one. Brendan Gleeson's also in this in a small role. When this first trailer dropped, uh, it was hype across the board from everyone, though. Praise across the board. And it, it's going to be a musical. You know, how big of a musical is it going to be? I don't know. You know, Todd Phillips has said that it's musical elements basically are just, uh, you know, Walking Phoenix's uh, Joker just talking through it. But you have Lady Gaga in here probably singing a lot. I feel like the musical elements will work, but it depends on if it's like in the real life. I don't think it's going to be in real life. You know, just watching the two trailers, because we have two now, you don't know what's real and what's fake, what's in Arthur's mind and what's not. I'm so interested to see how that's going to turn out, because I'm really liking how they're not showing you what is you know what's real here and what it's really about because i have no idea what this is about you know he's at a court hearing in one scene then he's breaking out in one scene and he beats harley in the jail arkham jail a lot of bad things happening in there but you have no idea what is real and what's fake that's what i love about what they're showing in these trailers the first trailer and the second trailer let me just tell you the cinematography and the color grading is a fantastic, just like the first one. I thought the first one had fantastic cinematography and color grading. Also, the score. I, I'm not sure if it actually if it won. I think it did win for best score, uh, the Oscar for that. I think uh, it won two Oscars the same year, Walking Phoenix and best score. I, I think it deserved both of those. Do I think that Walking Phoenix will win again? I, I don't think so, because he has to share the screen this time around. Lady Gaga, you know, if he brings in something as crazy as the first one, maybe. But I still think they'll both get nominations but I just don't know having not seen the movie I, I just think that it's going to be beautiful once again the musical elements could be you know hit or miss as I said but it really depends what's fake and what's real but the set design looks brilliant man the coloring in this movie just the simple shots man the simple shots are great like there's one shot in the trailer where him and Harley are you know about to kiss and there's like an explosion going on behind him but my favorite shot was the end of the first trailer where, you know, they're talking, Lady Gaga and Walking Phoenix are talking to each other behind, like, the glass of, you know, a prison cell and all that. And then she, she, with her lipstick, I think it was, she puts a smile on the glass and he lines up his own face and does a smile, making him like the Joker again. I, I thought that shot was brilliant. I lost my mind and when they did that. This, it looks brilliant, man. And as I said, this is another one. A lot of them on my list are like, if I think it's a bad movie... I'll still love how it looks because I'm not getting tired of these trailers. Some trailers I see like 10 times because I go to the movie theater a lot and I'm like, I'm tired of this crap. I don't want to watch it again. But every time the Joker trailer comes up, I'm locked in. I'm like, I want to see this more and more and more. So Joker 2, Joker probably I do, is my most anticipated movie coming out this fall and winter. Those are my top 10 most anticipated movies coming out the, for the rest of this year. Uh, leave your own top 10 down below. I'm excited to see what you guys are excited for. There's a lot of other movies I didn't discuss here. A lot of other movies that you could be excited for. So leave those down below. If you did enjoy this video though, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 800 subscribers. Helps me a lot, out a lot. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Thank you.